I think the key thing is the number uh, or the proportion who are vaccinated, especially among the elderly segments of the population, there's almost sort of full coverage uh, in terms of vaccinations. And if we look into the sort of data, the more behavioral data that we have been working on in my research, then we can see that the most important factor behind the willingness to get vaccinated, that is having trust in the health authorities. And that trust has been very high and very uh, stable throughout the pandemic uh, in Denmark. Of course, uh, during that process, though, of vaccinations, the AstraZeneca vaccine came into question and uh, Denmark ultimately banned the vaccine. Did that not lead to distrust around vaccines? So we have some evidence that maybe it actually increased trust, not uh, in the AstraZeneca vaccine. It did have an impact on people's perception of the AstraZeneca vaccine, but it did uh, create trust in the health authorities that uh, you had a sense that they took uh, seriously uh, the potential side effects and that they would uh, communicate transparently about them if they discovered it. Tell us about then the, the, the messaging, the communication throughout this process, because every country has run into roadblocks. They've made mistakes along the way. Yes, and, and there is also uh, mistakes uh, being made in, in Denmark and, and unclear communication. But I think one of the sort of key premises uh, of the Danish response has been a uh, an understanding that you need to trust citizens and that you acknowledge that citizens can deal with complex information and also unpleasant information such as that maybe some of the vaccines that we have been using uh, have side effects uh, that uh, means that we shouldn't be using them as widely as we've been using them before. Uh, or also that you are a sort of sharing information about what are the scenarios that we are looking into with regards to the to the epidemic. So I think an, an, an alternative way of, of looking at the citizens was uh, was sort of uh, symbolized by Donald Trump, who said that he was playing down the pandemic in order to not create a panic. And, and that sort of has a, or that is built on this notion that you cannot really trust citizens with the truth. You don't really know how they will react. Uh, and I think uh, for, a, for a large part, it has been uh, based on the opposite view of citizens in Denmark, that we can trust citizens with complex information. We can trust that they will actually follow the advice that we're giving them. Well, that is a fascinating approach because that is sort of trusting that people will do the right thing rather than it's, it's a carrot rather than a stick approach, isn't it? It is. And, and of course, there is uh, a lot of communication going into that because first you need to get people to understand why is it important to, for example, change your behavior uh, and get vaccinated. But you also need to be uh, sort of clearly telling people what they need to do. So it's, it's very unambiguous uh, communication that is needed, while at the same time you need to um, sort of tell about the uncertainties tell about the trade-offs, uh, the dilemmas that are involved in, in managing an epidemic about a, a unknown disease. So it is really a delicate communication balance between acknowledging uncertainty and giving unambiguous advice. Is this a tenet of Danish society more broadly? Is this something that is very much part of, uh, of Danish sort of values in the system? I think uh, this does or is very much conditioned also by the historical background of, of Denmark being a high trust society, which meant that that the authorities knew that citizens would trust their advice and also that it is a uh, a political system that is is not very conflictual. There's a lot of cooperation also between the opposition uh, and, and the government. And that, of course, also helps a lot because the government also knew that that their advice wouldn't be challenged by uh, other political parties in parliament, for example. Uh, Michael, though, how do you counter misinformation during a pandemic? There, there must have been moments during Denmark's handling of this when people were challenging that advice, were concerned about what the truth of COVID was. Yes, and, and 
countering misinformation is ex- extremely difficult when it first gets uh, a foothold and and therefore uh, a lot sort of hinges on it not getting that foothold which again comes back to the role of of trust there's a lot of uh, research within psychology and political science that that shows that that it is really this sort of mistrust of the system that that drives the receptivity of misinformation so it's not that you sort of see some random post on facebook and then suddenly say oh you uh, there's something in the vaccines. I cannot trust the system. It's the mistrust of the system that comes first, and which makes you susceptible uh, to believing in these types of misinformation. So, so the, to really counter misinformation, you need to establish trust in the system, and that is, of course, very, very difficult to do when the crisis is there. It's something that you need to do. Uh, in in peacetime, uh, so to speak. Yeah, and those those political divisions come back to really haunt you, I can imagine. And and that is something that we've seen, you know, in the Trump era, and it has spread spread here. It has spread to other parts of the world. Uh, Under what circumstances do you think in Denmark you'd see restrictions be reimposed? So... uh... I think one of the also important things about the the lifting of all the restrictions is that the Danish government has been saying that, well, if we see uh, a, a sharp increase in deaths or is in particular, if we see the emergence of a vaccine resistant uh, variant, then restrictions may be put back in. So so in that sense, this is this is sort of explicitly framed as a well, not an experiment, but at least something that we we try out and then we see how it goes and and hopefully it it goes well. And (laughs) yes, and it's a huge it's a strong incentive, isn't it, for people to 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 do the right thing, as you point out, that sort of reciprocal trust. Exactly. And and I think it's really the sort of uh, virtuous uh, spiral uh, from uh, from this uh, sort of mutual trust where the government trusts that the citizens will uh, listen and are able to deal with uh, the complexity uh, of the information and the citizens trust that the government does the right thing. Yeah, that's, I love that idea of respecting citizens to understand the right thing to do. Michael, really great to have you on. Thank you so much. You're most welcome.